Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. It's another snippet time. Now we have all these uh, ghost prints and uh, they could be very useful. So I worked on one and uh, I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. So we're going to sort of follow what we did here and uh, just have some fun playing with color and design. So we'll work with the blue one first. That's this one. This was a ghost print from one of the night scenes. I don't have a deer in here, but we're going to be adding it later. So we're going to start a little bit differently. Rather than inking the plate first, we're going to actually just ink the stencil. And what I can do then, I can lift it off this um, paper um, uh, palette. It's a, called a palette paper. And um, so let's get started here. We could do an Arbutus tree, which is quite red, but against the blue, maybe that wouldn't be so exciting. Okay, so let's try and mix up some Naples yellow. I'm going to just darken it a little bit with black. We have some carbon black. Uh, these, as usual, are my golden open paints. It's getting a bit pathetic. I might have to buy some new ones, <laughs> but they last a long, long time. I'm going to add a little bit of Lizard Crimson just to warm it up. We won't add a lot of black, just add it a tiny bit at a time until we get the color we want. So we're getting kind of a nice gray violet. And I think that would look nice against a, a nice subdued color against the brilliant blue. It doesn't have to be over mixed either. So roll it out. The alizarin crimson is going to uh, really give a bit of character to the to the trees here. So I'm just going to roll it out. It already has a border, as you can see, so we don't really need to really ink the borders at all. And what I could have done is done, done it directly on the gel plate, but then you have to wipe all the stuff out and this is a snippet and we're trying to be faster, right? <laughs> so whatever works. So we can transfer this now. And I probably have to wipe back a little bit there. Uh, we could do that at this stage, I guess. And I had it sort of taped down. And it's okay if we leave a little bit because it'll be sort of a shadow tone underneath the trees, which could be interesting. Right. Um, I attached this with low tack. So it comes off nice and easy. And now we're going to just place it. So just a little bit more wiping here. What I could do, and maybe that's a good idea, rather than trying to do something else to tack it down, is I'm going to just put a little bit of medium. Now this is a golden open medium. We're just going to, this way the stencil will stay put. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier, but hindsight is 20-20, right? Um, Yes, now it sticks nicely, so that was good. Now I'll bring over our... And we'll see how that prints. Now we have to use the plate as a stamp here. Okay. Ghost trees in the background. Okay, that's interesting. So, could it print it a little bit better? Let's run that through again. And I want to do a little bit more here on the maybe darken this blue so that our browns will show up better. 
So we're gonna add some manganese blue, some diazosine violet, and a little bit of white. There we go. And I'm just going to remove some of the violet, otherwise it's gonna be a little on the dark side. Okay, let's roll that out. Uh, we'll use a little roller. And I'm just going to roll to where I see the tree line starts and the, the base snow is. And then I'll do something tricky because I'm rolling to get some of the colors don't mix as well with each other, the violet. Uh, is a little bit more um, solid, less fluid. Almost mixed a uh, ultramarine blue here. And it's okay if it's darker in the foreground. Okay. Now we replace our stencil. This is the tricky part. Do it as well as you can. And see, now we just wipe <laughs> where we don't want it to be. Removing the stencil. You can clean it up even further here. everything up. Turning it over and rubbing the back. So now our foreground is a little more intense. Just going to blend a little bit the two printed areas. You can do this at this stage. Right, so we have that part done. I want to do a little bit more on the trees and so I'll show you the other way. And be, I'm going to be very careful so I don't over ink and it doesn't take us forever to do. And we'll just work with it, what we have. I want to get it a bit darker anyway. Right, now quickly removing all this stuff as far as you can. It'll be fine if we leave a little bit, it'll, it'll look like foliage. We just do what we can. This is, you know, when you're playing, you're discovering things, um, having fun with it. Printmaking is always interesting because there's so many accidentals and if you work with them rather than being annoyed by you know some of the things that happen that don't work quite for you <laughs> then uh, you make some exciting discoveries I think this is going to be really interesting so I'm just going to leave a lot of the stuff and I think what happened before is that maybe I waited a little bit too long while I was removing stuff. And it didn't print quite to the degree I wanted. So let's try it once more. I 
And the blue is very pale, so it's hard to see, but I can line up the top. Yeah, it looks like fall leaves or something. Fingers crossed that it's going to work this time. <laughs> and my Beren. Ha ha. Look at this. So we have a little bit of, I'm just going to take the light box off and uh, we have some texture on the tree. So that is so much fun. And then we have sort of this funny stuff in the background that could be old leaves and I don't know how much more I'm going to do, but I'm going to go to the next one for the snippet and I'll think about this one and uh, play along with me because I will, we will be posting this as usual at the end and uh, you can cut your own stencil of, I mean, it's simple enough. It's not a, a hard thing to do. If you don't like to draw very much, just take a you know, photograph and trace the trees off from it and then you know, use, uh, this is Yupo paper and uh, anything like that. Um, file folders. All that kind of thing works. Now you realize, of course, that this could be very interesting ghost print. A ghost print off, there must be a word for uh, ghost prints off ghost prints. So here we go, the ghost print off the ghost print. Now this is uh, um, oriental paper, they call it, or rice paper, but it's not rice paper, it's mulberry paper. And it has two sides, it has a smooth side and a, a surface set is a little less polished. So I think I'll use a smooth side to pick up all the lovely details. And then you'll have that piece to work with. We lost a little bit there, but don't forget the paper is white and that's what you're going to be printing. So now, um, You'll have to ink this whole thing in a different color to get this and then do that print. Well, that might be another snippet. <laughs> so here's the next one. Uh, again, we're going to put a darker tone on the trees. Hope for the best on that one. Work a little faster, maybe. And here goes. and taking off things we don't need. You can spend a little bit more time in your own space to clean this up. I'm just going to work fast and furiously here. And again, just taking it off. If I line it up with the top, usually it uh, prints really well. And print on here using our plate as a stamp. My wren. And they're lovely. We'll put a bit of tone on here. Um, not much, probably the same thing. I should have just inked it at the same time, but again, you think of these things after. And we just use a little bit of the manganese blue. A little bit of white. Titanium white and just letting it combine and being careful this time so you don't have to wipe very much. And it's okay if a little bit of the 
brown shows because that will be like a shadow area underneath the trees. We have a nice intense blue. Manganese is relatively transparent, so adding a little bit of white is a good idea. We can wipe out these little ridges, which, and this stuff here. So we did pretty good not getting stuff all over the place. I don't think I'll even bother with the ridges. Okay, let's put this back. Lining up. There. And sometimes you have to put something else. Uh, this paper is a little more fragile than. And like a cotton sheet or, so, or paper towel or something will help. And you're not damaging that paper, it could rip on you. Okay, so that's our base. That looks pretty good. You will crop the edges, of course, to clean that up. And now for the last step, and you're going to be doing this directly. So we're going to place a deer, a deer here. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have to find a nice spot for it. Probably in here somewhere. Let's see, maybe here. That's the, where we have been putting it. And uh, you, you can tilt it so that the one hoof is up or something like that and the rest are in the snow. So we're just going to use a little bit of the brown with a lot of the tawny yellow, which is a Naples yellow. And then you pounce it off a little bit. And then just start pouncing to get the color. Oh, the deer on there. Don't let the stencil come up. So we're doing this directly on the artwork. This is. Now what I'm going to do now is to get some tone underneath his little belly. I'm actually just going to put some dark in. <laughs> I'm hearing strange noises. Our garboonies are at it again. <laughs> Okay, so right in here, there'll be a little bit of a shadow. Underneath the neck and... In the back of the legs. back legs for sure and then underneath the belly and then this front leg probably has more light on it and down in here and I'm just putting a little bit more tone on here so that you could distinguish the forward leg from the front leg here so the this is actually 
on the back side of it, but it would be lighter than this one here. Okay, now the great reveal. Take the stencil off. And there you have your little deer, complete with tone. And there's snow in the front and some trees. I think it looks pretty good for a fast effort. <laughs> So thanks for joining me today and have fun with us. Uh, it's not meant to be a great work of art. You're just messing about with, you know, a ghost print. But you never know how some of these things turn out. So play with them and enjoy them. And we'll catch you another time. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And bye for now. Mm -hmm.